whimsy. We thought it might be fun to tell you about things that aren't fun. Yeah, like work. So uh, we've been talking about all of the weird jobs we've had over the years and decided it might be interesting to compare notes on the worst jobs we've had. So keep in mind, Jess and I have both had a above average amount of jobs in our lives. I would say both of us have, have each had 20 jobs or more in our life probably. Um, I think that's a decent, decently above the average. So we've had the opportunity to have the very worst of jobs and some really great jobs. But and great jobs are boring. Keep in mind, these aren't the worst jobs out there. These are just the worst ones we've personally had. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, oh, what do you got for, uh, do you want to do your, your worst one first? Or do I you don't have do your... these ranks worst to sure, the best. Let's so just throw them in. I'm just going to throw them in. I'll start with uh, when I was youngest up till more recently. How's that uh, sound? Okay, yeah. Oh, that sounds nice. Okay. Gas station graveyard shift. That's exciting. In the middle of nowhere, Maine. Yay! Well done. That must have had some challenges to it. It did. The most annoying thing that's persisted with me is that they never gave me my last paycheck. I called many, many times and spoke to many, many people and got redirected and nothing. Never got paid for that final one. Injustice. Also, living in Maine in the middle of winter and having to go outside in the middle of night to take a long stick to dip it into the, the, the gas tanks, the big underground ones, to check for condensation? That is not the thing you want to be doing at whatever degree temperature in the snow frequently. We did get free frozen be beverages as employees at any of the chains that we wanted, so I felt like I was getting one back at them by drinking as many as I could. Also, I was a poor college student at the time, and ramen gets old, so I noted that the toppings bar for the hot dogs was 100% free. So I used to load up a little paper plate with the chili topping and then some of the melted cheese on top and have that for dinner. That's Sad, I know, but that and a frozen drink next to it, good times. <laughs> that is a truly endemic college student meal right there. That is, that is a perfect example. Well 100 done. 100 percent free. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll start, I'm going to start with a truly horrible job that I worked for a company that did plastic molding and essentially they made sign holders and they made some plastic displays and they brought me on board to kind of innovate where they could go with some of that and it was a great job in theory but it was owned by an angry little Scottish man no offense no such thing and he would just delight every single day in coming out to a random person's desk. You never knew who it was going to be. I think he thought it was part of discipline. And he would just start screaming at you for something that you had done. So the entire office knew you were today's POS. And he... Point of sale? <laughs> yep, yep, that's <laughs> it. And he would be the most abusive person ever, tell you you're the most worthless thing that ever crawled out of your mother. The worst insults. Didn't matter whether you were a man or a woman. He was actually fairly unisex as far as that goes. He treated everybody horribly. And it just was an absolutely hostile, hostile work environment. And I've never worked in a place that was that horrible to go to in my life. Sorry, I'm just picturing you like crawling out of your mother now. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> horrific. Again, in college for me, I have credit card telemarketer. Oh, so much fun. Wow. You're willing to do anything to stay in school, so you take the most awful jobs. And the key to this one is that everyone hates you. Not just the customers, the people you work for also hate you and don't trust you. There's number, there's numerous uh, security levels that you have to get through just to get to your desk. There are cameras on you all the time and it's like a prison. I had one example to really drive home how much everyone hates you all the time there. I was on the phone 
I hadn't even had a chance to say much beyond what company I was calling from. And then the person on the other end of the line started yelling and screaming about me, at me, about how I was evil and soulless and just kept going on. And you're not allowed to hang up the phone until the customer hangs up on you. So I had to just sit there continuing this and then a supervisor came over because they listened to all your calls and in my other ear started whispering very aggressively, sell the card, sell the card, make sure they do it, ask them this, sell this, do this. So in each ear I had someone yelling at me, <laughs> one about how awful I was and one about how I wasn't succeeding and I needed to do my job better. It's good times, good times. Wow. So is that like devil on one shoulder, devil on the other shoulder? Kinda, yeah. Nice. I'm wow. sure times have changed, but this was back in the late 90s, so. <laughs> Bet they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> when I was first getting into sales, I decided I wanted to deal with marketing. And I found a company that did, they had a pretty good marketing gig. It was, it was advertising in this brand new format at the time, uh, which was direct mail. And I thought, I can help a lot of people. I can do a really cool thing here. So I got myself that job and I loved it. And then I grew to hate it and hate everything about it and then hate myself a little bit. And I think it was because I would sell these advertisements out of sheer enthusiasm and stupidity to businesses that just opened up or who were just trying to count every last dime of their money. And in the end, they lost it all because it wasn't a very effective way to advertise. I just didn't know that. And so I would go back to my boss just really crestfallen when these people would come back and say, I wasted all my money with you. Why would I ever give you another dime? And he would go, it was their fault, Dan. It was all their fault. They should have had a bigger ad. Or if they had a bigger ad, they should have put better content in. Or if they did put better content in, where was their coupon? Everyone knows you gotta use our coupon. And his goal was for me to go back to them five or six times and get them to slowly increase everything they did until he was out of excuses and they were poor and then move on to the next customer. And I got to the point where I just couldn't even look at myself in the mirror anymore. I just felt horrible every day going to work. So, yeah, we are we didn't do that for very long. I worked for a toner company. Oh, that was nice. Some muscle toning and stuff? No, like printer ink toner. Where they would take used cartridges and just refill the ink and then sell them to businesses. And it... Their whole shtick was that they hire you, give you reasonable goals. As soon as you start meeting those reasonable sales goals, they then up them to the point of ludicrous where there's no way anyone could ever meet those goals so that they can then fire you and hire somebody else at a lower pay and not ever have to give them full-time status. Coffee and I both worked for this company at the same time. You've met nice, Coffee okay. in the past ones. And we both had a similar experience. However, it was also a very misogynistic company. That was super fun. We sat next to each other and I would hear them treat him like an adult. And then they'd come over to my desk, talk to me like I was a child, and call me things like sweetie or or honey or sugar or Aren't you precious? Yeah, it was it was super fun. Plus I'm pretty sure there were criminals working in the other room filling the toner because they the people who owned it knew that they weren't going to be able to leave or report them for anything and just had to kind of take whatever they could get. Exciting experience all around. That sounds delightful. Right? I, this next one doesn't sound that bad in comparison, but I worked for a company that, sell, that sold hand and power tools to small businesses, uh, colleges, that kind of stuff. And I started out with a very small territory and it was great. It was a very well-known brand and everybody wanted it and I could save them a trip to the store. And then we realized that after you, after you make your first order, you can never go back to that customer anymore because we could not fulfill any orders at all. It was, 
nothing ever happened. So 90% of your orders would be messed up and then you would spend the next month trying to fix all of that while you tried to bring in new customers who didn't, you know, who hadn't heard that you were such a mess before. And it went on and on and on that way for several years. And essentially you went to market with a strategy that was, I have to replace two thirds of my customers after the first order. And all of our people started leaving and then they just started giving me more and more territory. So eventually I was the door to door, business to business salesperson for all of New England and almost all of the entire state of New York <laughs> before they finally went out of business. Okay, I have one more I'm gonna talk about. Actually, didn't you work for the mob? We don't talk about that, Dan. Yeah, but remember there was the time that- Dan, we don't talk about that one. Oh, never happened. Sorry. What's your next? I was the assistant manager for a shoe store in the mall that catered towards strippers and teenagers. Would that be the best way to describe that one? I would think that is exactly the right, possibly college students as well. So being the assistant manager of any store in the mall is never fun. You're going to get all of the cruddy work. You are going to have the worst hours you could imagine. And it's going to kind of suck a little. A little bit. Now, on top of this, make your main clientele teenagers who want to be... Prostitutes? Yes. Prostitutes is a good word for it. <laughs> who are normally there with their mothers. And so you're trying to sell really, really inappropriate shoes to teenagers' mothers, basically. That's your job. <laughs> On top of that, your employees are all teenagers who are completely irresponsible, or at least they were then. Uh, teenagers are different now. I don't know how that's changed. But back different. then, my employees, really irresponsible, mm -hmm. immature. They would just not show up for work at all and not tell anybody. They just weren't there. The cherry on top of this whole ordeal well, let me back up a second. Before that, they also expected you to wear their products. So that's wearing stripper heels all day on the cement floor. That's great for your back. Sounds Anybody ever cool. wonder why I have back problems these days? It's a, probably a contributing factor. Hmm. And you didn't get the shoes for free or even that good a discount at that point. Now, back to the cherry on top of this whole thing. My boss, the store manager, was stealing from the register on a regular basis and telling the employees that it was their fault, uh, those little teenagers, that if the till didn't match the money at the end of the night, or match what it was supposed to at the end of the night, they had to make up the difference from their pocket, otherwise they were gonna get fired. And it was on them. Even though she used to take money in front of me, and when I'd ask about it, she's like, oh, it's just for lunch or things like that. It's petty cash. I'm like, that's actually cash from the register. We don't have petty cash here. <laughs> and I reported it to the company because it was happening so frequently. And she was basically stealing money from the company and from teenagers. And instead of firing her or reprimand or saying anonymously that had a complaint, they told her who complained about her and then kept us both working at that store. Needless to say, I ended up leaving not long after that because she made my life hell. Wow. Good times. You win. You win. I don't think I do because I think you have something else to talk about that's way it, worse. Except I was in the army. <laughs> I was a paratrooper in the army. And I think even though overall the job is, you know, I got a lot from it. I don't think you can have a job where you got hit by an airplane in the air, you had a parachute malfunction, and got attacked by almost every poisonous species in the rainforest, and then got directly ordered to lie your, lay your body across razor wire while 20 or 30 other people crawled over the top of you so they could get to their objective. I don't think you can have that kind of a job without including it at the very top of the worst jobs to ever have list. Way, way, way. Right? Good times, good stories. <laughs> I feel like that's its whole own video though. Yeah, that's that's. If we have a lot of just weird jobs we're gonna talk to you about in the future, 
that didn't fall under worst jobs. They're just bizarre or bizarre stories or... The weird things that happen when you do... So Jess and I can be very much defined by people who do whatever it takes to earn the money we need to get by. And we have had no no pride in our workplace as far as, oh, I'd never flip a burger or I'd never pick up garbage. I've been a talent scout. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's real weird. <laughs> I will say, however, that I am also sharing the trait of being the grim reaper for business. Better than probably 40% of the companies I've worked for have gone out of business while I've worked for them. Don't put that in your resume. I mean, it is not something that, that, that starts any interview with, but uh, it is it is a fact, and that is a, a horrible trait. So I know all about companies going out of business. I'm really good at putting them to bed. If you're enjoying these videos and want to see those future ones we were talking about, hit subscribe and maybe like this video. Yeah, and now let's, let's frost, frost the cake. cake.